In this episode, I will discuss the life of legendary a Trey Gangster Crip, Monster Cody. Monster Cody was born Cody Scott in 1963, being raised in South Central and living majority of his life on 69th and Dinker. Monster was the second youngest of six kids. Monster was brought into the gangster lifestyle early, being around one of the founders of the Crips named Tookie in his early years. Tookie would influence Monster's later Crippin. Monster became an a Trey Gangsta off his association with an a Trey Gangsta named Trey Ball. Trey Ball co-signed them to the rest of the a Trey Gangsters. Initially, Cody didn't have a hood name, and the a Trays didn't want him to keep the name Cody with another set having someone with the same name. But Cody later earned another identity. June 15, 1975. Cody had his initiation into the a Trey Gangsta Crips. The 9th of June 15th, Cody and four other a Trey gangsters went into Brim's turf to put us in work. From his own words, this was the night he caught his first body, and from then on, was a full-time gangbanger. By 1977, Cody gained the name Monster after stomping a man for 20 minutes and putting him in a coma. The police said the person who had to did it had to be a monster, and the name stuck from there. From 1977 to 1979, Monster Cody would be in and out of juvenile hall from various shootings and assaults. The longest stretch he did in that period was nine months. By the time Monster got out of jail, the a Trey gangsters and their once allies, the Rowan 60 Crips, became rivals off a fist fight turning into a shooting, with a new recruit a Trey gangster taking the life of Tyrone, the brother of a well-respected Rowan 60 Crip named Big Rick. This forever changed a lot of the gang structure and the lives of many gang members, with once being friends, now becoming rivals and other hoods having to pick a side. Over this period, Monster went all in in the war with their new enemies, the Rolling Sixties, and already blood rivals like the Brims and the Inglewood families. The summer of 1980, Munster mom asked him to go to a store with her. She often went to a store called the Buddha Market. The store was located in the Rolling Sixties turf. Munster got into a shootout at the store with a Rolling Sixty member, which he had to do another bid for but he beat the case. July 28, 1980. Munster's girlfriend just gave birth to his first child. On the way to the hospital, he drove into 60's turf, where he spotted a 60 he known as Bank Robber. He shot Bank Robber multiple times and drove off. By this time point, Munster said the eight trays lost up to five members, and the 60's lost up to eight. During this time period, the Rolling Sixties took and held an A-Trey gangster sister captive for three days, doing graphic things to her. A group of A-Trey gangsters seek revenge. They wanted well-known Rolling Sixties like Petey Wack, Poochie, Keita Rock, Mumbles, and Snoop Dogg, which they called well-known shooters from Sixties. Not finding them, they found another Sixty. They chopped him up, and they later even took his arms as trophies. By the end of 1980, Munster had been set up by three women and ambushed by the Rolling Sixties being shot multiple times. Two days after getting out of the hospital, Munster was picked up on six shootings. He stayed in jail fighting the cases. He once again beat the cases though. By 1981, more and more casualties happened in the war to aid trades in the Sixties, and Munster was frontlining. Munster landed back in jail and received four years for a crime he didn't commit. It was sent to YA, later going to YTS. While in jail, Munster got into an altercation with infamous Rolling Sixty Little Fee, with both dissing each other hoods, but didn't get to go further than that. While in YTS, Munster got introduced by a counselor to Islam, and started attending services, and later reading books about the Nation of Islam and revolutionary figures. Munster would be released in early 1984. In August of 84, Munster would have another run in with Little Free from Rolling Sixties, this time on the streets at a food place called the Golden Ox, ending with Munster having a shootout with several Rolling Sixties and Little Free leading the charge. Neither Munster or Little Free was shot and both got out the situation. Munster couldn't stay out of jail. In September of 84, he went back to jail after Little Eddie from Sixties identified him as being one of the men who shot him. Munster was placed in a notorious 4800. At the time, Little Fee was there at the same jail for a banger, but while in jail, Little Fee charges became bigger, with the shooting of football player Kermit Alexander family. Fee was later charged with that and received life. While in jail, 
Munster joined the Consolidated Crip Organization, also known as CCO. He was convinced by Tony Stacy from Hoover. Munster Cody got the name Sangika Shakur from a BGF member, and later legally changed his name to that. In 1985, Munster Cody was sent to Chino State Prison to serve a seven-year bid. During his bid, the CCO began to fall apart, coming from many different things, like the Hoovers leaving the CCO, in the Blue Notes, another Crip organization becoming their rivals. By 1988, Munster Cody began to start writing and was later paroled the same year. After starting a new path in life and trying to be a family man, he slowed down on banging and committing crimes. But he was later arrested in 1991 for beating a man up for selling work in his hood. He was sentenced to seven years for this. While in jail, Munster began to identify with the new African movement. Munster also wrote one of the most well-known urban books ever, the autobiography of an LA gang member while in prison. Munster would go on to write other books like Thug Life and appear in some hood DVDs upon his release. Munster's later years would have other run-ins with the police, with him going to jail in 2007 and being on LA's most wanted list. He would have to do a five-year bid. 2017, Munster faced other charges but was once again paroled early. 2019, Munster started to resurface and be seen doing many interviews, describing the past and what he was doing at the moment. Munster Cody died on June 6, 2021. With his death, he was praised and respected by many. Even many past rivals paid respect and came to his funeral. Outside of being a devoted banger, he was a family man, an author, a leader, and a person who showed he could be successful even with the back stigma many people from the streets get. With that being said, RIP to Monster Cody. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, check out my previous videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.